Electrocardiography is the process of recording the electrical activity of the heart over a period of time using electrodes placed on a patient's body. These electrodes detect the tiny electrical changes on the skin that arise from the heart muscle depolarizing during each heartbeat. In a conventional 12 lead ECG, 10 electrodes are placed on the patient's limbs and on the surface of the chest. The overall magnitude of the heart's electrical potential is then measured from 12 different angles and is recorded over a period of time. In this way, the overall magnitude and direction of the heart's electrical depolarization is captured at each moment throughout the cardiac cycle. The graph of voltage versus time produced by this non-invasive medical procedure is referred to as an electrocardiogram. During each heartbeat, a healthy heart will have an orderly progression of depolarization that starts with pacemaker cells in the sinoatrial node spreads out through the atrium, passes through the atrioventricular node down into the bundle of his and into the Purkinje fibers spreading down and to the left throughout the ventricles. This orderly pattern of depolarization gives rise to the characteristic ECG tracing. To the trained clinician, an ECG conveys a large amount of information about the structure of the heart and the function of its electrical conduction system. Among other things, an ECG can be used to measure the rate and rhythm of heartbeats, the size and position of the heart's chambers, the presence of any damage to the heart's muscle cells or conduction system, the effects of cardiac drugs, and the function of implanted pacemakers. History the etymology of the word is derived from the Greek electro, because it is related to electrical activity, cardio, Greek for heart, and graph, a Greek root meaning, to write. Alexander Muirhead is reported to have attached wires to a feverish patient's wrist to obtain a record of the patient's heartbeat in 1872 at St. Bartholomew's Hospital. Another early pioneer was Augustus Waller, of St. Mary's Hospital in London. His electrocardiograph machine consisted of a Lippmann capillary electrometer fixed to a projector. The trace from the heartbeat was projected onto a photographic plate that was itself fixed to a toy train. This allowed a heartbeat to be recorded in real time. An initial breakthrough came when Willem Eindhoven, working in Leiden, the Netherlands, used the string galvanometer he invented in 1901. This device was much more sensitive than both the capillary electrometer Waller used and the string galvanometer that had been invented separately in 1897 by the French engineer Clement Adder. Einthoven assigned the letters P, Q, R, S, and T to the various deflections, and described the electrocardiographic features of a number of cardiovascular disorders. In 1924, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his discovery. Though the basic principles of that era are still in use today, many advances in electrocardiography have been made over the years. Instrumentation has evolved from a cumbersome laboratory apparatus to compact electronic systems that often include computerized interpretation of the electrocardiogram. Medical uses Reasons for performing electrocardiography include suspected heart attack, suspected pulmonary embolism, a third heart sound, fourth heart sound, a cardiac murmur or other findings to suggest structural heart disease. Perceived cardiac dysrhythmias, fainting or collapse, seizures, monitoring the effects of a heart medication, assessing severity of electrolyte abnormalities, such as hyperkalemia. The United States Preventive Services Task Force does not recommend electrocardiography for routine screening procedure in patients without symptoms, and those at low risk for coronary heart disease. This is because an ECG may falsely indicate the existence of a problem, leading to misdiagnosis, the recommendation of invasive procedures, or overtreatment. However, persons employed in certain critical occupations, such as aircraft pilots, may be required to have an ECG as part of their routine health evaluations. 
Continuous ECG monitoring is used to monitor critically ill patients, patients undergoing general anesthesia, and patients who have an infrequently occurring cardiac dysrhythmia that would be unlikely be seen on a conventional 10-second ECG. Interpretation A typical ECG tracing is a repeating cycle of three electrical entities. AP wave, a QRS complex and AT wave. The ECG is traditionally interpreted methodically in order to not miss any important findings. Rate and rhythm A heart rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute is considered normal. A heart rate slower than 60 beats per minute is said to be bradycardic and a rate faster than 100 beats per minute is said to be tachycardic. The physiologic rhythm of the heart is normal sinus rhythm, wherein the sinoatrial node initiates the cardiac cycle. In normal sinus rhythm AP wave precedes every QRS complex and the rhythm is generally regular. If this is not the case, the patient may have a cardiac arrhythmia. There are different types of rhythms that can cause the heart rate to be too fast or too slow. Many athletes can have a normal resting heart rate of less than 60 beats a minute. The key indicator of whether a slow heart rate is a problem is whether the person is having any kind of symptoms. One of the primary rhythms that can cause the heart rate to be slow and symptomatic is known as a heart block. There are many types of heart block, but the most common is an AV block. There are also many rhythms that can cause the heart rate to be fast, the most common of which is sinus tachycardia. In sinus tachycardia, the depolarization is still starting in the normal pacemaker of the heart, called the sinoatrial or sarnode. When the heart rhythm is no longer initiated in the SAR node but is also initiating in various atrial foci then the heart rate can become irregular, and can develop into atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. A fib can become unstable when the heart rate is above 100. The risk of rapid AFib is that the heart is not beating efficiently, and the blood that is pooling in the atria of the heart can begin to clot putting the person at a high risk of stroke or heart attack. This is the reason many people with AFib have to take blood thinners for the rest of their life. Other fast rhythms include supraventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, and ventricular tachycardia. The heart rate can be approximated quickly by dividing 300 by the number of large boxes between two consecutive QRS complexes on the EKG paper. Axis The heart's electrical axis is the general direction of the ventricular depolarization wave front in the sagittal plane. The QRS axis can be determined by looking for the limb led or augmented limb led with the greatest positive amplitude of its R wave. A lead can only detect changes in voltage that are aligned with that lead, therefore the lead that is best aligned with the axis of ventricular depolarization will have the tallest positive QRS complex. The normal QRS axis is generally down and to the left, following the anatomical orientation of the heart within the chest. An abnormal axis suggests a change in the physical shape and orientation of the heart, or a defect in its conduction system that causes the ventricles to depolarize in an abnormal way. A normal axis can be quickly identified if the QRS complexes in leads I and AVF are both upright. Lead I is positioned at 0 degrees and lead AVF is positioned at 90 degrees. If the QRS is upright in both, its vector of depolarization must be somewhere between these two angles, and is therefore normal axis. Amplitudes and intervals All of the waves on an EKG tracing and the intervals between them have a predictable time duration, a range of acceptable amplitudes, and a typical morphology. Any deviation from the normal tracing is potentially pathological and therefore of clinical significance. For ease of measuring the amplitudes and intervals, an EKG is printed on graph paper at a standard scale. Each 1 mm represents 40 milliseconds of time on the x-axis and 0.1 mV on the y-axis. Ischemia and infarction Ischemia or non-saint elevation myocardial infarctions may manifest his saint depression or inversion of T-waves. 
Saint elevation myocardial infarctions have different characteristic ECG findings based on the amount of time elapsed since the ME first occurred. The earliest sign is hyperacute T waves, peak T waves due to local hypokalemia in ischemic myocardium. This then progresses over a period of minutes to elevations of the saint segment by at least 1 mm. Over a period of hours, a pathologic Q wave may appear and the T wave will invert. Over a period of days the saint elevation will resolve. Pathologic Q waves generally will remain permanently. The coronary artery that has been occluded can be identified in an saint elevation myocardial infarction based on the location of saint elevation. The lad supplies the anterior wall of the heart and therefore causes saint elevations in anterior leads. The LCX supplies the lateral aspect of the heart and therefore causes saint elevations in lateral leads. The RCA usually supplies the inferior aspect of the heart and therefore causes saint elevations in inferior leads. Artifacts and EKG tracing is affected by patient motion. Some rhythmic motions can create the illusion of cardiac dysrhythmia. Artifacts are distorted signals caused by a secondary internal or external sources, such as muscle movement or interference from an electrical device. Distortion poses significant challenges to healthcare providers, who employ various techniques and strategies to safely recognize these false signals. Accurately separating the ECG artifact from the true ECG signal can have a significant impact on patient outcomes and legal liabilities. Electrodes and Leads 10 electrodes are used for a 12-lead ECG. The electrodes usually consist of a conducting gel embedded in the middle of a self-adhesive pad. The most common type of electrodes for ECG application is silver, silver chloride. The names and correct locations for each electrode are as follows. The term lead in electrocardiography refers to the 12 different vectors along which the heart's depolarization is measured and recorded. There are a total of six limb leads and augmented limb leads arranged like spokes of a wheel in the coronal plane and six precordial leads that lie on the perpendicular transverse plane. In medical settings, the term leads is also sometimes used to refer to the 10 electrodes themselves. Although this is not technically a correct usage of the term, each of these leads represents the electrical potential difference between two points. For each lead, the positive pole is one of the 10 electrodes. In bipolar leads, the negative pole is a different one of the electrodes, while in unipolar leads, the negative pole is a composite pole known as Wilson's central terminal. Wilson's central terminal VW is produced by averaging the measurements from the electrodes Ra, La, and L to give an average potential across the body. In a 12-lead ECG, all leads except the limb leads are unipolar. Limb leads leads I, 2 and 3 are called the limb leads. The electrodes that form these signals are located on the limbs, one on each arm and one on the left leg. The limb leads form the points of what is known as Einthoven's triangle. Lead I is the voltage between the left arm electrode and right arm electrode. Lead II is the voltage between the left leg electrode and the right arm electrode. Lead III is the voltage between the left leg electrode and the left arm electrode. Augmented limb leads leads AVR, AVL, and AVF are the augmented limb leads. They are derived from the same three electrodes as leads I, 2, and 3, but they use Wilson's central terminal as their negative pole. Lead augmented vector right has the positive electrode on the right arm. The negative pole is a combination of the left arm electrode and the left leg electrode. Lead augmented vector left has the positive electrode on the left arm. The negative pole is a combination of the right arm electrode and the left leg electrode. Lead augmented vector foot has the positive electrode on the left leg. 
The negative pole is a combination of the right arm electrode and the left arm electrode. Together with leads I, 2, and 3, augmented limb leads AVR, AVL, and AVF form the basis of the hexaxial reference system, which is used to calculate the heart's electrical axis in the frontal plane. Precordial leads The precordial leads lie in the transverse plane, perpendicular to the other six leads. The six precordial electrodes act as the positive poles for the six corresponding precordial leads. Wilson's central terminal is used as the negative pole. Specialized leads Additional electrodes may rarely be placed to generate other leads for specific diagnostic purposes. Right-sided precordial leads may be used to better study pathology of the right ventricle. Posterior leads may be used to demonstrate the presence of a posterior myocardial infarction. A Lewis lead can be used to study pathological rhythms arising in the right atrium. An esophageal lead can be inserted to a part of the tract where the distance to the posterior wall of the left atrium is only approximately 5 to 6 mm. An esophageal lead avails for a more accurate differentiation between certain cardiac arrhythmias, particularly atrial flutter, AV nodal reentrant tachycardia and orthodromic atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia. It can also evaluate the risk in people with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, as well as terminate supraventricular tachycardia caused by reentry. Lead locations on an EKG report A standard 12 lead ECG report shows a 2.5 second tracing of each of the 12 leads. The tracings are most commonly arranged in a grid of four columns and three rows. The first column is the limb leads, the second column is the augmented limb leads, and the last two columns are the precordial leads. Contiguity of leads Each of the 12 ECG leads records the electrical activity of the heart from a different angle, and therefore align with different anatomical areas of the heart. Two leads that look at neighboring anatomical areas are said to be contiguous. In addition, any two precordial leads next to one another are considered to be contiguous. For example, though V4 is an anterior lead and V5 is a lateral lead, they are contiguous because they are next to one another.